Hey pals, before we get started, just want to mention that this episode means that we only have seven episodes left to go to the end of Miami Vice. And you know what? We have a surprise for you. During the holidays, we did a limited run of stickers for your Miami Vice podcast, the greatest Miami Vice podcast on the internet. This limited run sticker pack was a sample of five potential stickers that we would have chosen sometime probably around season three. We never got around to it and decided to go ahead and make the run now. We have plenty of those stickers left over that we'd love to offer it to our fans. The way for you to get one of these sticker packs is to go over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash go with the heat and support us for just one month. Support us in the month of January. If you are a patron as of February 1st, you will get one of these sticker packs to just for being a patron in the month of January. You can support us for as little as $1 a month. So for $1, you can get this sticker pack. Head on over to patreon.com slash go with the heat to see the details and see how you can sign up. With only seven episodes left to go in the Miami Vice run, this is probably your only shot to get merch from Go With The Heat. We're coming to the end of this podcast. It's just around the corner. So you'll want to jump on this right away. Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week we're talking about Season 5, Episode 14, titled The Lost Madonna. It originally premiered on March 17th, 1989. And it's written by Robert Gothels. This is the only episode he wrote, but he also wrote for the show Swamp Thing. Well, that Mm. explains a lot. (laughs) (laughs) I'm thinking no Emmys were won by him. I'm just as, saying, Swamp Thing does not strike me as a show to win the Emmys. As a serious fan of trash movies and TV shows, Swamp Thing is like on the Mount Rushmore of trash movies and TV shows. The show is really bad. I remember it because my dad liked to watch it. We're coming around on everything coming back. And I believe that there is a Swamp Thing series coming back for either the DC streaming service or the CW. It's one definitely of the two. A- yeah, they definitely announced a new Swamp Thing TV show for the DC streaming service. And they said it's going to be more serious like the comics. Um, I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen the the stuff that's coming out for the DC TV. No, thing. I haven't. It don't look good. <laughs> All I know is I was going to get the DC streaming service. The thing that turned me off about the DC streaming series was they, they were going to make all these shows for it. For the DC base, started looking at a lot of these shows, and they are very aimed at lower age groups, like preteen level. Popular on the CW. Yeah. I watch Arrow, and I watch Flash, and those types of shows. Even these ones were a little bit too too young for me. <laughs> I was hoping that the street with the streaming service, it would go the other way. The stuff we can't show you on the CW, we'll put here. That's the way they you know. hyped the robin series i thought we were gonna get marvel netflix style shows on the dc streaming service and we're not the director is chip chalmers and this is his only directing credit he's also the assistant director for 20 other episodes so he's kind of a vice veteran and i'm gonna throw everyone for a loop on this episode this is out of the ordinary for vice and I liked it. I liked everyone's yeah. let that set in. Isn't bad. <laughs> I'm looking at you. <laughs> All right, John. Music this week is one band we've heard from before, and one I'm just anticipating your pronunciation. Your pronunciation. Your pronunciation. <laughs> I'm pronunciation. Your pr- <laughs> I'm anticipating your pronunciation too. <laughs> and what I'm just waiting for you to talk about because I've never heard of this band before. <laughs> what do you got for us this week, John? All right, so let's start with the person we have seen. We have She's Waiting by Eric Clapton, aka Slow Hand. Eric Clapton's shown up in the music a little uh quite a bit. He's also shown up in quite a few episodes. So his music has appeared in One Eyed Jack. Phil the Shill. And then we also had the Derek and the Dominoes appearance a few weeks ago as well. So I feel like I've talked about Clapton quite a bit. I talked about him during his Derek and the Dominoes period just to try and find some new things to talk about him. One, he's the only three-time Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee. So, which that's pretty impressive. He's He was inducted as a solo artist, but also as members of the bands Cream and the Yardbirds. So he actually might get a fourth time if they decide to bring Derek and the Dominoes in. Outside that impressive stat, he really is ranked as 
being one of the greatest guitarists of all time. In my opinion, rightfully so. Rolling Stone had him ranked second in their 100 Greatest Guitarists of All Time, as well as The Times had him number four in their 10 Best Electric Guitar Players list. For what it's worth, Eric Clapton said that the greatest guitarist ever is Prince. So Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think that Prince would be on either of those lists as well, or they should be. So even though people don't always think of him as a guitarist. So he was born in Ripley, Surrey, England, and he came out during one of the biggest music revolutions in London history, basically. He started joining bands when he was about 16, and... He was really coming up through when Jimi Hendrix was living living in London. Also, there was a really big blues movement that was running. A lot of blues artists from America were getting paid more overseas. Last thing, to get into Clapton too much, I'll just leave you with one last note that I thought was pretty interesting. When he was born, his mom was 16 years old, and his dad was a 25-year-old Canadian soldier. His dad shipped out and then never came home. His dad basically went back to Canada after serving in the military. Eric Clapton actually grew up thinking that his grandmother Rose and her uh, and her husband were his parents, and that his mom Patricia, his older sister. I thought that was pretty interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's so. Let's get to the one that you really want to hear about: "Twist in My Sobriety." Anita Karam. Perfect. I think I got it, guys. Perfect. I don't right think out I messed that up at all. That was a, that was a first pitch home run. <laughs> she is a pop folk singer. I love that combination. Pop folk singer. <laughs> the 80s is such a weird time. <laughs> she was actually born in Munster, Germany. Her father was a career military man. She actually lived in Germany for most of her early life before moving to Hampshire, England. She started singing in nightclubs as a teen and got signed by WEA Records. Her debut album, Ancient, Ancient Heart, which featured this song and her other hit, Good Tradition. It was released in 1988, and she was only 19. Twist in My Sobriety and Good Tradition were both top 10 hits around Europe and actually sold over 4 million worldwide. So she immediately out of the gates, jumped out, and was successful. Her next three albums that followed that, not nearly as successful. In fact, <laughs> each album sold fewer than the last. To the point that she took a break from music in 92. Like, like things are just keeping a little worse and a little worse and then selling a little <laughs> less. She moved to San Francisco, probably started doing yoga, returned to music in about 1995 with the album Lovers in the City. It got better reviews, but still wasn't quite good enough to keep her, uh, get her a new contract. So her WEA contract would finish out with a 96 best of album. Since then, she's released a few albums with a couple smaller labels. She's retired once. And then since 2013, she's been touring the UK and Europe mostly. She's still around if you really want to look for it. I had never really heard of her, but I will be Googling at least one of her two movie appearances after this. She appeared in a 2012 French film called By Morocco, where she sings a jazz tune called Blue Gardenia, which is actually a real famous jazz tune. I might look that one up. Or I could be looking up the 94 film Erotique, which <laughs> she was in a segment directed by Monica Trout, uh, where she plays a secretary that interrupts two people having coitus. So mm. I, I, I might look up the Blue Gardenia <laughs> song. I might look up the, 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 the secretary. I don't know. <laughs> That's about all. I tried to see if Tanita would carry us a little further, but just just not a lot there. She just struck me as someone that's huge in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> that would make so much sense. <laughs> and that's going to do it for us this week on Go With The Heat. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We would love to hear from you. Email us, gowiththeheat at gmail.com. Check out that website, gowiththeheat.com. You can find all the other ways to contact us, including Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, not Tumblr anymore with the porn band, but you know, you get the point. Like, you can find us all over the place. You can get a hold of us. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this episode. Set us straight. Good, bad, in the middle. Defend my defense. Defend me. I have everyone against me. Defend me from my wife. <laughs> And for Help those of you go episode. trying to Google it, the <laughs> film is Erotic. It's E R O T I Q U E. You're oh. welcome. <laughs>
We would love to hear from you. By the way, this is episode 14. We are that close to being done with Miami Vice. So we would love to hear from you. Get in there while you still have the chance. The other thing I would like to mention is, like I mentioned at the top, we have a very special sticker pack going on right now. If you subscribe to our Patreon for as little as $1 a month, you make a pledge for $1. And on February 1st, that $1 comes through, we're going to send you a custom sticker pack that we made. It was a limited run. We don't have that many copies of it. We made it kind of like for ourselves for around the holidays. We have some extras. We're going to give them out to peep, to fans of the show. For $1, you can get that sticker pack. Five custom stickers designed by our own Jenna Barham, who is in our season one show. She designed those stickers. You can get those for as little as $1. Subscribe to our Patreon. We're giving it away to everyone who subscribes to our Patreon. So make sure to go check that out. There's other ways to support us too, other than that Patreon where you can get that free sticker pack. And then you can also email us, goldheat at gmail.com. But we would love to see a review of the show, in particular with iTunes. If you have a chance to go give us like a five, you know, that, something simple, just a five-star review. You know, the most glowing review that you can give us. Go over there and give that to us when you have a chance. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals.